in the last videos that I've shown, I've been showing you how to actually mix drums with stop plugins and Pro, and Pro Tools. What I'm going to look at now is working with um, SoftTube Console 1, which is what I tend to work on when I'm working in Pro Tools. I tend to use Console 1 for a lot of the drum editing, drum recording, and EQ decisions that I make. So what I've decided to do is I'll just show you how I'd come about recording or getting together a mix uh, using Console 1. And this is just basically I'm going to load all the plugins up so I'm just going to put console one on all the audio tracks. So soft tube, console one, mono. First thing I'm going to do is what I did before is I'm just going to loop a section. I'm also going to mute the guitars and then I'm just going to have the drums open. So the good thing, one of the things I like about Logic, which Pro Tools doesn't have at the moment, is the vertical, the auto zooms, the horizontal and vertical. Um, so what that means is with the folder tracks, as I adjust channels, or as I adjust the folders open and close them, um, it'll automatically resize every uh, resize the session so I can kind of see everything that I need. So that's what I'm doing here. So I've got a folder track for drums. It is a summing track. It's a summing folder track. So what that means is all the tracks actually actually route to this track number one. And just going back onto the mixer view. Um, what I've done is I selected by basically selecting the tracks I wanted then holding and control to go across to anything that's blue and all I've done then is I just loaded console one across all the tracks now with console one the good what I really like about it is <clears throat> it'll actually take the session name from You'll take the session name or the track name from Logic and it'll also update the track number as well. So as you can see, we've got it, track four is the kick drum five six. Uh, we've got all that as well. Let's have a look if we've got channel strip components, track number. So we put track number there. It'll actually show so the last track is track twenty, which is the room. So what I've got now is the guitars are muted. So if I just press spacebar now, it should just play me the This is the default view that we have in console one. Um, the bottom, we've got the meter, meter bridge. And what I tend to do is if I'm looking for a channel, I normally, I've got a set of buttons at the top. And I'll just go through and select the ones that I need or want. We'll start with the kick drum. Um, the other thing I've got is I can solo channels on console one. So and I can also group things as well if I want. So if I want to go group four and five, I can have them together and solo one and off. In total, there's about five sections really to console one. We've got the input, um, we've got a dynamic shape, which is the gate, so there's also a transient designer in there. I've got an EQ section, and then it comes to compression section, and then I got my output stage, like an output fader, and I can also look at the drive as well. So all I'm going to do is just show you how I kind of work on console one, how quickly I can get together like a mix it's close to what I had before. So I'm just going to press play, and I'm just going to work through, and I might stop and just explain what I'm doing as I go. So we're just going to start to begin with with the kick drum. So I do low pass, cut, low cut, high cut. So low cut, high cut. Let me move this now. Change that to shelf. And let's go 7k. I've got like, so there's my, take some of the mid range out. So go find a set frequency I don't like. Where is it the most? So what I'm looking for now is where is the boxiest. I'm going to bring a compressor in as well. Change that to 4.1. I'm on about 3 dB compression. And I'm also getting a little bit of the snare, which I don't really want, so I'm just going to bring in the gate. Have a look at the kick out. So, so this channel, that's what I've done now. I've just loaded in a gate, a EQ, and a compressor. I haven't done any drive just yet, and I was in high and low pass filters on the kick drum. Um, and what I can do is I can bypass that plugin as well by pressing shift and phase invert. So that's what it sounds like originally, and what it sounds like now. And 
then if I just bring the mixer view. Oh, nice. Right, on to the next one. So console one as well has got a couple of different channel strips. I've got this the SSL four thousand, which is a default system and that actually says in the top right corner. Um, there's also console one, which is based on the Neve channel strip. So I'm just going to load the second kick drum into the brick class A, which is Neve channel strip. Um, so we've similar. It looks similar. So the filters, so the filters, the EQ is all slightly different. With the SSL channel strip, you could kind of scroll through different settings. On the Neve channel strip, it's a bit like the Neve. You kind of got 35, 60, 110 hertz. You've kind of got switches that you go through, and basically just try and find the one I like. I think 110 or 60. And then I got a bit of that snare again, so we'll look at that changing that gate. Now I'm not a big fan of the Neve gate, so I'm just gonna if I press fine adjust or shift and shape, that'll let me load the SSL gate. Better. Let's have a listen to the two together. I've also got a phase and burp button as well, so I can actually switch between just check the phase relationship between the two mics is pretty good. Now I'm noticing as well that the kick in the, the kick in kick out are actually pretty hot to go, pretty hot, so they're just sort of clipping a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press group four and five. So they're now grouped together, so then I can actually change the volume and I can turn them down, turn them right down, and I can bring them back up. And let's have a look at. So I'll probably see in the SSL, or oh, actually, no, I'm not, I'm not completely lying. I'm going to go, I'm going to go for the Neve on the Subkick as well. I'm going to just get rid of basically go 6 kilohertz there. I'm going to go. Shelf to take down 10 12 dB of 12, and then we're going to go big. I'm going to change the shape again to the SSL. I'm just going to check the phase on the subkick. And bring it down a little bit on the control. Now, if I press all, that clear. All and so I got a button here on the corner that says solo. Um, so I press all and solo, that actually clears the solo. Right, let's move on to the snare, which is track nine. So, like that. Getting too much of the kick drum and the hi hat, so I'm just gonna gate it as well with the SSL. So, probably stay on the SSL channel strip. I'm gonna make the release a bit slower as well. I'll change the EQ to be full. Let's have a look at So this is without the gate. And with 
compressor in, which I just kind of bailed in. I'm going to leave that off for now and just get the EQ that I like on this. So let's have like a pretty good shelf EQ. Go big. And then let's go sharp, EQ, and then. The same again on the snare bottom. I'm going to look at the first thing is the gate. Just high pass, sorry, low pass a little bit of the high end. Um, just take some of the. Just take a bit of the information that I don't need out of it. So then, similar for the low end as well. And check the phase. Check the phase as well. The other thing I'm trying to make sure is on the snare bottom is I don't get rid. I don't get to. Um, I don't lose the ghosting notes as well at the start of this, so I'm just gonna And the other thing that I can do as well, if I press all and then do hold down shift and phase avert, that bypasses all the plugins for me. So that's rules four. So I've just grouped the snare top and bottom and I'm just using the output volume just to bring it down because it's overpowering the kick. Right, let's move on to the overheads. I'll come back to the toms normally afterwards. Now I press group 15 and 16, so I've grouped the tracks together. So any changes that I make will happen automatically on the group channels. And I have a feeling I'm going to load the need EQ for this. Um, let's have a look. Make sure that I haven't done that properly. Okay, so group 1516. Uh, strip. Maybe So I'm just checking the phase now between the kick and the overheads. Go back to 1516. Off, on. There's not much in there at all. Probably not going to EQ. I tried a compressor on this um, channel, but it didn't quite work, so I've actually taken it off. And then the other thing that I've actually done is the overheads are quite quiet, so I've actually done quite a lot of input gain as well on the console one. So I've done 15 dB again, and then I'm just kind of boosting the low end and looking for the looking for a bit more detail on the snare here on my 4K. And then I've also got on the right hand section of the strip is um, there's a section that says dying shape, so it's a dynamic shape, the equalizer and the compressor. There's an order which I can change them around so I can actually change that setting. So it's normally shape, it goes left to right. Sometimes you can have the compressor before the equalizer and you can have the EQ before the shape as well. 
Um, I normally just keep it central. Um, I've also got drive, so I'm actually driving this a little bit more. All right, 18. Uh, so really, our crutch is automatically done. And what I'm going to do for this track is I'm going to go quite over the top of it. So set the drive to quite high. So it's like a 1176 compressor. So I just change the setting on here, and we're going to go all. Two room mics, <clears throat> the crotch mic, well, whatever you want to call it, dick mic, crotch mic. With it, I'm just trying to make like a kind of vibe again, I'm just trying to distort it. I think I used a bit crusher or a distortion last time. I'm doing the same this time with the console drive. I might look at using a different plugin afterwards, um, like Decapitator or something, which is a Sound Toys plugin. Um, I just, I, again, I'll just like do the volume control on that. Let's have a look at the two room mics. left and right with them and we're going to go EQ and we're going to have a look at Trident Trident EQ so we can do load different EQ settings on this as well um, so we've got the Trident so we're going to have a look at so we'll look. Compressor as well because um, they're grouped again. Um, we're going to use some universal audio plugins now. I'm going to use 1176 again, and it's a Revy. Uh, the Revy is I quite like. It's kind of like uh, one of the standards. Uh, I'm going to go quite big again. One of the thing I'm going to go quite big. One of the things I quite like about the console one is it lets me do blend, uh, mix blend on the UAV plugins, which I don't normally get to do. You don't have a blend knob function on it. It's something that only happens on the console one. So let's have a look. I also want to see what the order like is like if I change the goes compressor for the EQ. And I'll put it back.
I'm finding now is as I'm doing this, I'm inverting the phase on the room mics only. I'm actually finding that the phase inversion in relation to the rest of the kit now, it sounds better with the phase inverted on the room mics. <laughs> Final thing I'm going to look at now is the toms. First thing to do before that is just turn it down. Right now, let's have a look at the rack tom. I'm going to go Neve. I'm saying again, I'm going Nevi Q. I'm going Nevi Q. Take some of the low end rumble out. Some of the, some of the stick noise in. Just take the mid range down a little bit. And drive. on it as well, go 4 to 1, it's actually the same, and just on about 3 dB. All right. uh, we are on floor tom, I'm going to bring the back tom back in as well. thing to do now is get the gate So with the gates on the floor, the rack on the floor, they're quite, they're quite extreme. Uh, the, the gates are quite long because they're quite, a, they're a hard gate and they just drop down. So I need a bit of time for them to kind of just gradually get down to actually dropping out. So that's why I've actually used my version you stay in the day. If you do it, it just cuts out too much and it starts something a bit unnatural. That's the reason for the longer one. I'm using the section on the drums. I'm just using this loop 
just to show where we're at with the location of the drums and the actual mix of the toms. Gone through all the tracks and made a couple of quick decisions about the overall vibe and sound of it. And what I want to do now is just listen to the whole picture of the drums. So I'm just going to go back from the beginning. Uh, the other thing that I've added, um, they're not quite ready yet. Let's turn you off. Let me go away now. Um, the other thing that I've actually added on here now is I've actually added another track for the kick drum. And I've got Solo Safe on this. So what that does is that if I solo any of the other tracks, it, it means that um, they'll still feed through. If I just solo the kick drum. If I take the solo safe off, I lose the kick drum completely because all the tracks, are root, four, five, and six, are root into track three on console one. So I put the solo safe back on, and it just comes back up again. Right. So I just want to hear what the tracks sound like. And I've done the same as well for the snare. What I was looking at when I was doing the kick drum, um, I've added a tiny bit more click and a bit more low end, and then I'm compressing it with 1176 from the Universal Audio range. Okay. Right, the other thing is I've got the, um, I'm getting a bit of, like crosstalk from the snare, so we're just going to do this at minus 13. I hate this view. No more rogue snares. And then the final thing that we had is I've got um, parallel drums um, on going from the main drum folder and that's been routed then to another aux with the back bottom of the track and we're just taking a slam on it um they're in dual mono so that means that i've got this plug in here and basically like when you do dual mono plugins it means it doesn't automatically figure out the numbers so just look for the first available tracks and reroute them so i got channels one and two and I'm then controlling it all in Pro Tools. So the channels, I've, I've labeled these manually as well, plugins left and right. And if you watch my other videos, I explain why I do dual mono for parallel stuff, especially with toms. And that is just, again, it's to, the parallel compression is just to kind of sit underneath, give more energy and keep the volume. Um, it's just to give more energy to the song and not worry too much about the overall transients at the top. And then let's just have a look with the guitars back in. Okay, so this time we're not using stock plugins. So what I've actually gone for is Little Plate, which I've used in Adam Jenkins's video before. And all I've done is I put the modulation on and I've taken like the high pass, low cut, high pass filter, somewhere in between. It's probably like just taking like the low end rumble off and I've shortened it a little bit. So it's, this is just for the snare and the toms. And then I've done a room, room reverb then, which is just a vintage 224. And it's like an algorithmic reverb. And that is being fed. Let's have a look. It's going for the rooms. And it's also got the cymbals. The snare, I'm noticing a bit of um, choking, so I'm just going to take the roll the gate back off a bit.
So in all, um, this, while sort of explaining it, it's probably taking me a lot less time to set up and having to manually go through because I've got the controls. I can kind of just press that and I can just kind of like cycle through, find the channel that I want and update. And I, the, I'll just show you quickly as well. Just mute the guitars. What I can also do is I press Alt, I hold down Find Adjust and Phase Invert. That'll bypass all the plugins or bypass all the, the settings that I've got on console one, which is all the drums. Still got the reverb. Just gonna mute them. So this is what I started with. And this is where we go. I'm going to do on this is I'm just going to go here and go duplicate. Okay, so what I've got now is I've duplicated the kick in channel and I'm just going to process this differently. It's still going to get rooted because I've duplicated the settings, it's still getting rooted to the kick aux channel here. Um, all I'm going to change is the EQ is going to be completely different, so I'm just going to reset everything, take the gate off, low cut, high cut, compression off, right, and then we're just going to solo it. And I'm just going to get rid of all the low end frequency, I'm going to do very, very high low pass, and I'm just going to look at bringing in just like a, the clicky sound of the kick drum, and just let that sit on top. So we've just got that, press play. shape. I'm going to put a gate after the EQ so that I can actually just gate out any of the frequency, any of the signal information that I don't need. And then we're going to bring the volume right down and take the solo off and I'm going to gradually bring it in. So what I'm going to do on this now is just, I'm just going to set it up similar to how we did the, the previous setting. Um, I've gone Brick Class A for Drive. I'm going to change the EQ to a Pull Tech, which is the EQ P1A, which is similar to the setting previously. Um, so I've got um, the low section, I've got a high boost, I'm going to change that to 5, change that to Broad, and just boost that to 10 and just have a listen to that and then I also 
also quite like a tele LA two A, the UAD Teletronics LA two A silver. And I'm just gonna dial in the brush into about three, four dB. <laughs> Final thing is the toms again. There's a bit too much weight on it, so I'm just going to do a bit of a low cut. Final thing, I'm just going to look at looping this drum again. I just brought a well, <laughs> again. I've got I did about five k, and it's just to get looking at the sick noise just to cut through the guitars. Um, again, this is a starting point for drums. Uh, obviously, when it comes to mixing, I would like to kind of back go through and do a bit more dry, rising automation. And um, with the bass now, uh, where are we channel twenty three. Um, again, the pull tech EQ I really like because it drives and does really well. And again, I haven't actually looked at any of the low ends. Um, I could probably normally look at like one hundred sixty, and then just kind of do like. Um, boost a little bit of both but I've left it fine being and just it's, it's sounding quite good and vibey so I've actually just left it as it is um, so that is how I've mixed the track um, just have a listen uh, what I'll do is just play from track 77 <laughs> going to open up uh, JC Drum Mix. I'm going to go from 77. <laughs> open up don't close this is open up how we had it when we started and close you so then this is 